service one more time if my mother was here today these other words you hear her say lord i'm so glad to be in your service one more time one more time i'll stay it one more time one more time well one more time one more time Lord, I'm so glad to be in your service one more time. Amen. It is good to be among the living. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I say this because we have been through a week. I don't know what your week was like. It could have been a roller coaster ride. It could have been up and down. It could have been painful. But either way it go, we are here on another Sunday and we come to give praise and honor to Almighty God and to give Him thanks for what He has done for us and what He's going to do. We come to seeking something from God because everybody needs something. Amen? This morning our sermon is going to come out of Hebrews. The 13th chapter. And my title for this, How to Please God. Can I get a witness? Amen. How to Please God. And it reads, keep on loving one another as Christian brothers. Remember to welcome strangers in your home. There were some who did that and welcomed angels without knowing. We're going to stop there a minute. Love one another. I understand that. But for some reason or another, we find that hard to do. As this broadcast go out near and far, around the world, other countries, I don't know what you may have went through I don't know what you may be going through, but I do know that the Word of God says, love one another. But today we know in America, and even in some of our families, we got family members that are holding grudges and been holding them grudges for some 30-some years. Somewhere, somebody just cannot get along with his brother. The part that gets us the most is where God said, how can you say you love God that you cannot see, but you don't love your brother or your sister that you see every day? Amen? And then you go far from that, you go, t you actually tell them, I can't stand you. But that's not how you please God. You please God by loving your brothers and your sisters. I want you to know that it wasn't not, not far long ago that I was in that same situation. I held a grudge. But I'm going to tell you, how God moved. God brought this family of mine back together. We sit down at little thick and we broke bread together, we cried together, and hey, we hadn't been together for 40 some years. We could not get along. But there's a God that can mend all broken hearts. They're the God that can bring about a change. 
But the thing is, you must want to have that change in your life. You see, you must, in order to get right with God, or be right with God, or to please God, you got to let all that hostility go. Y'all got to come to make amends. You got to apologize and show some kind of love. Amen? Now, I know that our second verse, remember to welcome strangers. Well, I remember back in the day when you could leave your door unlocked. I remember back in the day when you might have been a stranger, you could knock on the door and you could eat a meal. I remember days like that. I remember days when I was in the Marine Corps and I was traveling the highways. I would get in my car on the weekend not knowing anything, but I would go visit some of my friends, relatives, in, in another town. And they would welcome me in, and I could sit down and eat bread and lay down in their house just like I was a member of their family. I remember times when I could be walking down the street or somebody else walking down the street and the rain coming down hard and if you tell them, hey, come on and get on the porch, man, out the rain. Nowadays, somebody stopped me and you asked you, to, can I stop here and get out the rain for a minute? You tell them, go on down to the service station. Uh, the store right down around the corner, you can stand down there. You see, People are afraid to help people these days. People are afraid to do anything because so much tragedy has happened. Because every time you turn the TV on, you see where somebody's being killed. Just a couple of days ago, in Charleston, South Carolina, a young man, or two young men, ran their car up in the road. And they asked the fella to pull them out, that they'll give him $20. And instead of giving the, 20, 20, the man $20, they killed the man. You see, it's hard for us to show brotherly love. It's hard for us to accept a stranger. It's hard for us to open our door and welcome somebody in because we don't trust anybody. But God is telling us, take a chance. How to please God. These are things that you must do. And these things, when you do do them, you are pleasing God. Amen? Now, we're going to go a little further here. Verse 3 says, Remember those who are in prison as though you are in prison with them. Remember those who are suffering as though you are suffering with them also. I can't quite understand, but I sympathize with a man that's in prison. God said, sympathize with him as if you was in there with him. Well, Lord, uh, I understand what you're saying. One thing I can do, I get a flashback from the time when I was in prison. And I don't want to be there, Lord. But I will pray for my fellow man that's in prison. I can't somehow put myself in his place 
because this day and time, a lot of people are going to prison for some stupid reason. Doing something that they didn't have no business doing. And when they got there, they realized they could have handled the situation in a different manner. Somebody knew what I'm talking about here this morning. And it goes on to say, suffer. Suffering with those people that are suffering with something. I can't say I will suffer with you, but I feel your pain. I know that there are some things that my father, mother told me, my father told me. And if you think back, that's back in the old days. They didn't have what we have, modern technology. They did not have the finer things that we have to date. But guess what? They could show sure enough tell you some things. They may not been well educated, but they had enough common sense to tell you right from wrong. Amen. You see, they may not have all the finer things. They may not didn't have a one dress or one pair of shoes. but they could tell you the right thing to do. And today, if you go back in your mind, and if your parents are dead and gone, you can remember the conversation that y'all had together. I can remember the time when my daddy told me, boy, you need to do this, you need to do that. Now that I'm out and I'm grown, I'm out here on my own, I can realize and I can see what the man was telling me was the right thing to do. You see, it might have been back in the days of old, but it's all coming back into play today. In a few months, we are going to be electing a new president. There is where we really need God. That's where we need to come together as a nation, as people, and pray and ask God to put the right person in the house. You see, I watch, listen to these debates. There is no love in these debates. Everybody is talking about everybody. Everybody is digging up stuff way back in the past, using it against them, and all along, what are you doing? You're showing hatred. You ain't showing no love. You are talking about them. You're putting them down. And that's not pleasing God. Now, on over here in chapter in number four, I don't want to get nobody upset in here this morning. And I don't want to step on nobody's toes. But this is one of the most topical things in our life. Marriage is to be honored by all. Amen? Amen. Husband and wife must be faithful to each other. God will judge those who are immortal, and those who commit adultery. Keep your life free from the love of money, and be satisfied with what you got. 
Well, 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 well. Here we go. Love your wife and your husband. America, we're not pleasing God. But I thank God for the simple fact that there are things that goes on in our lives and in our marriage that sometimes will make you want to get outside of it. It will cause you all kind of confusion, but there's a God that keeps a hand on you that keep you from doing crazy things. Amen? How can you say you love God and you're out here messing with another man's wife or another woman's husband? How can you say you love God? How can you say you care about God? How can you say you love your husband or your wife and you didn't come home last night because you was out with somebody else? I can testify because I used to be that kind of man. I used to do those kind of things. But I thank God for what he has done in my life I thank God that I am doing my best to live by my vow. You see, I know that God has his hands on me because I've been in some situations where I know back in the day I wouldn't stand for it. You see, I thank God for being a God that he got his hand on me. Sometimes we go through this marital thing and we try to live up to our vows. What the commitment that we made with God, we try to live up to that even though the other party is not. They're taking you through kind of all kind of things, but yet still, 13, going on 22 years, you're still putting up with the same old mess. And you're still trying to live by the vows that you made with God. Well, I come to tell you, God is going to judge. This is what he said in his word. It's not what I said, it's what God said. And I must tell you that when God judged, I don't know how the outcome is going to be. The outcome may be in divorce court. The outcome may be you're packing up leaving. You see, But in these situations, whether it's for the love of another man's wife or husband or whatever the case may be, or then again, it may be for just the love of money, you cannot serve God and love money too. I understand it takes money to survive. I understand that Money is what makes the world go round. I understand that you need money to get this. You need money to get that. You need money to pay the bill, the electricity, the rent, the house, the mortgage, whatever it is. <coughs> but to love nothing but money and not give God any of your time, it doesn't please God. I come to tell you this morning, 
in order to get your life right, you got to live to please God. Because my brothers and sisters, you are living in the last day and he is coming back. Nobody knows when or what time it's going to be, but God is coming back. And he's going to judge us all according to what we do and how we conduct ourselves. This morning, I can't say that all is going to go well for you. But I can tell you what you need to do. I can tell you where you, you can seek an answer. You must go to God in prayer. Because before Jesus left this earth, he left that command and he told you what you had to do. But the thing is, are you willing, are you ready to do and live according to what he said? Like I said, you can't live and have it both ways. Because life is not going to be pleasant. You say, Pastor, what, what do you mean? What? You lost me there for a minute. Well, it's simple. Don't take the word of God in your heart and in your mind and feel good about it. And then when you go outside that door, you're all in a different world. If you're going to serve him, serve him 100%. I know you're going to fall sometime. I'm not a perfect man myself. I still have to talk to God on a 24-7 basis. I have to talk to him every minute of the day. You see, because everything is not going to go your way. My way or your way. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, I come to tell you, you need to have God in your life. It's time for a change. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but there's a man named Jesus. He sits high and he sits low. He can answer and deliver you from anything that's if you want to be delivered. I take my hat off to you. I want you to know that God is willing and able and all he wants you to do this morning is to call on him. All he wants us to do